What's going on everybody? Chris here from projectoption.com and this will be the first video in our Tastyworks tutorials playlist. So in this first video I just want to go over some basic navigation and features of the Tastyworks trading software. So right now I'm looking at a chart of SPY but let's not get into that just yet. Um, so on the left hand side here the first thing that I want to talk about is the watch list. So this is pretty standard and this current watch list that I'm looking at is the project option watch list that I've already created. But there are a number of watch lists that Tastyworks has created for you, such as upcoming earnings, which would be one that would be very valuable during earnings season. So if you pull up the upcoming earnings watch list, you'll see a number of symbols with earnings that are coming up. So that is good to know, especially if you're trying to trade some earnings and you're looking for symbols to trade. So I'm going to just go back to my project option playlist and just like that it pulls it right back up. So right above watch list you'll see it says recent symbols and if you hit the down arrow right next to recent symbols it'll pull up the recent symbols that I've searched for in this search box right up here. So if I search for Google you'll see Google comes up in my recent symbols right away. So I'm just going to drop that down but that's just something that you can you know you can use and just be aware of if you're trying to pull something up that you recently looked at but it's not necessarily on your watch list. So let's say I wanted to add Google to my watch list. I could also just come right down here in the bottom left hand side where it says add symbol. Type in G-O-O-G-L which is one of the tickers for Google and then hit this plus sign and Google would be added but it looks like I already had it. So let's type in Walmart. So if I want to add Walmart to my watch list type in WMT and then hit the plus sign and it adds it to my watch list and if I go to a different watch list and then go back to project option we'll see that it's saved to my watch list. So that brings us to the next point so as you see here right where it says Starbucks if I hover over that it'll pull up a little search box and I can use that to search for symbols that I want to look at and if I type in a symbol it'll pull up the information that we're looking at right now so in the case of this chart right here if I change this symbol, it will pull up the chart of that symbol. So up here is the search box, so that's going to be a feature that you're going to be using a lot because obviously you're going to be searching for and looking up information for different symbols throughout the trading day. Now when you search for a symbol using this search box on this upper left hand corner, you'll notice that you'll get some information about that stock when you type in that symbol. So the first thing that Tastyworks offers is the IV rank calculation which is implied volatility rank. So that's going to tell you where the stock's current implied volatility lies relative to its one year historical implied volatility range. So let's say Facebook's lowest implied volatility was 20 percent over the past year and its highest was 30 percent over the past year and right now at this moment Facebook's implied volatility is at 25 percent that would be an IV rank of 50%. So with an IV rank of 67%, that's telling us that Facebook's implied volatility is closer to the, it's in the upper end of the range relative to where it's been over the past year, but it's not at the highest level. So I have a video on IV rank and IV percentile if you want to watch that. I'll link it in the description, but for now we'll just move on. So the next thing you have is the last price, which is the last price that Facebook shares traded at which at this moment is 166.60. Then you have the daily change. So this is how much Facebook shares have increased or decreased on this particular trading day. And then finally you have the bid and ask and then you can see the volume just over to the right. So that is the basic information that you'll see whenever you pull up a different stock. So if you go to Walmart, we get some different information. You go to Amazon, you'll see it instantly updates relative to what you're searching for. So one thing that's important when you're trading on Tastyworks is this menu in between the watch list and the chart. So first you'll see positions which will bring up all your portfolio positions. But then you have the trade page. So the trade page is going to be what you're going to do, what you're going to use if you want to trade options on a particular stock. So right now we have a couple different views. So we have the table view which is the conventional option chain view. Then we have the curve view which is a more visual approach to trading. Um, and this is a view that you'll be familiar with if you traded with the Doe trading platform. So I prefer the table view just because it's what I'm used to and it's the more conventional approach. So right now we're looking at all the different option chains for Amazon options. So one thing that I love about this is that when it's in earnings season, 
you'll see this purple E with the line that goes all the way across. And if we look at the right here, it says April 26th. So this means that Amazon has earnings coming up on April 26th. And basically, that's very important because any option chain before will not be exposed to that earnings move. But any option chain after this purple E is going to be expiring after Amazon's earnings, in which case these expiration cycles will be exposed to that earnings movement in Amazon. So this can, you know, this can save you because if you're not familiar, if you're not aware of a stock's earnings date and you make a trade, then you could potentially realize some pretty significant losses if that stock moves against you in a quick fashion. So this purple E right here is very helpful for alerting you that earnings are approaching. Now one thing I love about the Tastyworks trading platform is that it clearly shows you which expiration cycles are standard monthly cycles and which ones are non-standard cycles. So all of these expiration cycles that I'm hovering over right now, these are standard monthly expiration cycles. And we also have May 2018 and April 2018 in the standard cycles. So I know those are standard because they have this kind of standard looking color scheme to them and they don't have any designations to the right of the expiration date, such as these five expiration cycles right here. So we can see that these are a different color and they also have a W next to them, which designates a weekly expiration cycle. So this is really handy because I can clearly see which ones are standard cycles, which is what I normally trade about probably 95% of the time. And another cool thing you can do is you can filter out which expirations you see. So if you go to the top right hand corner here to this config area and you click on this filter button, you'll see it says all expirations, regular expirations only, and non-regular expirations only. So if I only wanted to trade standard monthly expiration cycles, I could go ahead and click this regular expirations only, and now we have all of the standard monthly expiration cycles. Now if I was looking to trade only the non-standard expirations, I could click this button, and as we can see here, we only have weekly expiration cycles now. So that is a very cool trick, and I generally just keep it on regular expiration cycles unless I was going to do an earnings trade that I needed to access the weekly option cycles for. So while we're on the trade page, I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the option chains just so you can see what it looks like. So on the left hand side here, of, so first of all in the middle we have the strike prices. So this, these are the strike prices of the different options. And on the left hand side we have the call options and on the right hand side we have the put options. So I can see the bid and ask price for all of these calls and put options. And then I have two other columns selected, which are open interest and delta. So open interest is going to tell me basically how many options are open for that particular strike and option type. So at this 1550 call option, it says 2.36K, which means there are 2.36 thousand option contracts that are open as of right now. So I also have delta, which is useful when you're trying to structure trades based on delta. So for instance, if you were trying to sell a call option with a delta of 45, I could just go and look at the delta column right here. And we can see that there's, a, there's an option with a delta of 0.46 and 0.44. So one of these would be closest to that 45 delta call option. So moving on, we have activity, which will show you the recent activity in your trading account. And if you look at this, there's a little hidden menu that's kind of hard to see. But if you hover over one of those things, it'll pop out and you can see all of the other features that you can look at. So you can look at a watch list and let's go to the project option watch list and it'll populate that with a number of different features. And if you go to the top right here, which says filter or config, click on that little wheel and this will allow you to basically customize what you're seeing. So if I wanna look at the mid price, I can drag that over, click okay and this will tell me the mid price of whatever the stock I'm looking at or whatever the product I'm looking at. So that is the watch list view. If we hover over this, you can go to Tasty Trade so you can stream directly from the platform. And this is where you click on chart. So if you click on chart, it'll pull up the chart for whatever symbol you're looking at, which in this case is Amazon. So one cool thing is that, as I mentioned before, if you're looking at your watch list and you want to quickly populate some information related to that stock, you can just go ahead and click on the symbol on the watch list. So let's say I wanted to look at the chart for Netflix. I just go over here, click on Netflix, 
and it will automatically populate in the chart. So that's going to do it for this video, everybody. If you want to learn more about Tastyworks and their competitive commission rates, go ahead and click on the link in the description and comment section below and see if they might be a good fit for you. By the way, if you're brand new to the channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and go ahead and click the bell so you get notifications every time we release a new options trading video. If you're interested in watching some more options trading videos from our channel, go ahead and click the video link on this slide right now to check out some more of our content. Once again, I'm Chris from ProjectOption.com and thank you for watching.